Oh, can you, can you tell me what um, SLIME stands for? SLIME stands for Snails and Slugs Living in Metropolitan Environments. <laughs> Nice. And I would like to say that I came up with that, but it was actually Brian Brown, our entomologist. My idea was Snail Project. Yes, my name is Jan Vendetti. I'm the assistant curator of malacology and the Twyla Bratcher Chair in Malacological Research. Um, I've been here for about two years, and uh, right now I study land snails and slugs. The Slime Project is an iNaturalist project, iNaturalist uh, platform project and the institution, Natural History Museum of LA County, uses uh, that platform to encourage people in Southern California to post pictures of land snails and slugs, native and introduced, um, that they see anywhere. And then we, for what I was surprised to find out, for basically the first time ever, are getting an inventory of what lives here. There are checklists, there's no guidebook, um, there are no published accounts of certain species since they were described and we also would imagine or anyone should imagine that a big city like Los Angeles would have a lot of introduced species and nobody except basically for us in in the last year and a half have been trying to keep track of who is new and who what species are established here and so iNaturalist is the basically the only way that we can really do that with uh, a critical mass of people, and we've been actively uh, collecting introduced taxa and native, but mostly introduced taxa around Los Angeles to make um, a collection, because sometimes that's the most overlooked group of organisms, the introduced stuff that is in the city that nobody, for some reason, really cares about, but that is a really important part of biodiversity and really interesting in a city, because you can track it and it has potentially human implications. Like those, in the case of snails and slugs, they may be disease vectors, they may be um, crop pests that we don't want getting into the Central Valley. There are a lot of good reasons to track the species that are coming in, and then there are also a lot of good reasons to um, get a, a sense, a, a biogeographical sense of and diversity sense of the species that are native. Um, I gave a talk a couple weeks ago at the Sierra Club about this flat land snail called the chestnut snail. It's called Glyptostoma gabrielense, and it's considered native to the San Gabriel Mountains, which are just, just off of uh, Pasadena and Altadena, um, Sierra Madre, that area. And this snail is only known to live there. And why I was describing that species, this Glyptostoma gabrielense snail to the Sierra Club was because they wanted to know what Development, there's some developments right at the foothill, like human you know, house developments um, uh, or little neighborhood developments. They wanted to know what the impact of those developments would be on the snail. And I said, well, I really don't know much about it. But it turned out that I knew, because of people on iNaturalist, more than anybody else because nobody else was looking at it. So the only reason we had data points for where the species was and the only reason anybody had data points for where the species was found was because we could map them on iNaturalist and because people who were part of the Slime Project documented what they saw in the mountains. There were no other um, documented cases of this snail in 70 years. We could say from iNaturalist data where it was found. We can't say everywhere that it was found, but that's a starting place to say now we can map where these species are. And for snails, um, one of the things that's really kind of fascinating about land snails is that if land snails are somewhere, they had to have been there for a while, and that environment has to be very hospitable to endemic snails, because snails will be very picky about where they live, and uh, you can't restore a natural environment and get land snails to come back. So you have to have an environment that hasn't been altered and changed too much to keep land snails, endemic ones at least, living there. And then when, if you protect an area because endemic land snails are living there, you're protecting an environment that is uh, probably home to a lot of other species. So they're not they're not the charismatic right group that you would like hang an entire conservation. It's not a panda, right? But it's it's importantly a like I was saying before, it, it indicates, and in, in they're indicator species. Native, native ones are often indicators of uh, a um, hospitable habitat for a lot of other species. So they should be and could be um, used as 
uh, ambassadors for a certain habitat. And I think that that is important. And I see that coming. I think that people's hesitancy maybe to accept it as quote unquote real data, I think that that's an appropriate um, caution to have because it's true that somebody could fake all kinds of data. But what I found is that iNaturalist gives you and peop other people's data, uh, at least the way that I've used it so far, gives you someone's account of where that species is found. And if I want to go and collect it for a museum, for this museum, or just document that it's there, count individuals, try to see if it's an established population, I can go to that place and ground truth it, so to speak, right? I can go and see if that person's GPS coordinates were off, or I can contact them on iNaturalist, which I've done before, and, and literally said, can I come over to your house and collect these snails from your yard? And yes, I, can, I could, and went to somebody's house and collected some. And in that sense, it's been absolutely wonderful.